What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you will learn about power supplies and their features such as 115 volt versus 220 volts, the 24 pin motherboard adapter, wattage ratings, and the number of devices that you can power. Now, as a word of caution, before you begin working on any type of electronic device, always disconnect the device from its power source. The next thing you need to do is discharge any capacitors before working on the device because capacitors can store electric charges that could shock or electrocute you. Also, be sure to properly ground your body by way of an electrostatic discharge strap before messing around with any type of electronic device. A power supply unit, also known as a PSU, converts mains alternating current or AC current to low voltage regulated direct current or DC current power for the internal components of a computer. AC power comes out of the walls and is then converted into DC to be supply power for desktops and laptops. Modern personal computers universally use switch mode power supplies. Some power supplies have a manual switch switch for selecting input voltage while others automatically adapt to the mains voltage. Let's talk about 115 versus 220 voltage. So the majority of power supplies are dual voltage power supplies that deal with two ranges of voltages. You have 115 to 120 volts and 60 hertz. That is the North American standard. And then you have 220 to 240 volts, 50 hertz. That is the European and Asian standard. Power supply rating. So modern tower cases or upright case computers typically have power supplies of 500 watts or more, which enables these computers to support a greater number of drives and cards that can be installed. Smaller desktop computers have ratings of around 220 to 330 watts. The power supply rating on a power supply can be found on the power supply outlining information pertaining to safety and amperage levels produced by the power power supplies, different DC outputs. Now you may come across older power supplies that have a voltage switch indicating as the whether you are using 115 volts, the North American standard or 230 volts, the European and Asian standard. If a power supply is set to the wrong input voltage, the system will not work or at worst, it could fry your system and render it useless. Most modern power supplies can automatically determine voltage levels and cycle rates without the need for manual switching. This is referred to as auto switching. Let's talk about the 24 pin motherboard adapter. So motherboard form factors, ATX, micro ATX, and mini ATX, they utilize the 24 pin power supply connector. Although some legacy 20 pin connectors are still in existence used by older ATX family motherboards. And there is a wonderful picture of a standard 24 pin connector. And here is the standard color code for power supply wires. You got red, 5 volts, yellow, 12 volts, orange, 3.3, black is the ground, purple is 5 volts, green is PS on, gray power good, white, no connection, and blue, negative 12 volts. This is the standard right here for this wonderful picture that I just showed you a few seconds ago. Let's talk about wattage rating. So by definition, a watt is the standard unit of power in the international system of units equivalent to one joule per second and equal to the power in a circuit in which a circuit of one amp flows across a potential difference of one volt. Hmm. In layman's terms, in electrical systems, a watt is a power measure of the rate at which energy flows. Another way to visualize this is to think of water flowing through a pipe. An amp is how many electrons are flowing down a wire or how much water is flowing through a pipe, aka the current. A volt is the pressure being exerted on the flow of electrons as they move down the wire or how wide is the faucet that is allowing water to flow? Is it allowing only a drip or is the water just rushing out? And the formula for calculating watts is watt equals amps times volt. That is the magical formula, ladies and gentlemen. 
Now, to calculate the wattage rating you would need for a replacement power supply, you would simply add up all of the wattage ratings for everything you need to have connected to your power supply, such as your motherboard, memory, CPU cards, bus powered USBs, drivers, and any external devices that you may use. If the total wattage you need exceeds 70% of your current wattage rating for your old power supply, then upgrade to a larger power supply. Be sure to check the vendor specification sheets for wattage ratings. If you have amperage ratings instead of wattage ratings, multiply the amperage by the volts to determine the wattage and then start adding. If you have a device that uses two or more different voltage levels, calculate each voltage level as well and add up the numbers to figure out the appropriate wattage requirement. And then finally, let's talk real quick about the number of devices and the types of devices to be powered. So the power supply also powers various peripherals, everything from hard disk and optical drives, case fans that do not plug into the motherboard that use the four pin Molex power connectors, SATA L shaped 15 pin power connectors for hard disk and six to eight pin PCIe power cables for high performance PCIe 16 video cards that utilize 12 vote power. All right, so let's go ahead and do some of this wonderful check on learning, shall we? What is the very first thing you should do before you begin to work on electrical equipment and or devices? Should you make sure it is properly plugged into the power source? Should you disconnect it from the power source? Should you connect it to a portable power source or should you touch it with a multimeter to measure its electricity levels? So what is the very first thing that you need to do before you begin working on electronic equipment? The correct answer is uh, disconnect it from the power source, ladies and gentlemen. Always disconnect electronics from the power source so you do not electrocute yourself and all that great, wonderful stuff. All right, so in summary, we have talked about input voltages from 115 volts to 220 volts, 24 pin motherboard adapters, wattage ratings, and the types of devices that you can't connect to a power supply. Now, if you felt like you got something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, drop a comment, share this video, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also, go ahead and visit my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.